right, um, Wayne Rooney, what's his greatest strength as a player? Um, I think he's got many. I think his uh, ability, you know, his talent, you know, the way he receives the ball. Um, I think it was very apparent as soon as I sort of saw him and played with him that he uh, got a great first touch, a great awareness of people around him. He's a very all-round uh, all striker, and I think you've seen in, modern, in the recent days he can even drop into midfield. So I think it's uh, his overall <coughs> ability with the ball um, and his awareness of others around him. And what about his uh, strengths off the pitch? What's he like around the camp? Very good. I've been fortunate to play with him for a long time with, with the England squad and against him. And uh, he's a big personality, Wayne. You know, he's, uh, there's certain players that are quite quiet in the dressing room and go about their own ways pre-game, in hotels, etc. Wayne's quite uh, a very bubbly character. You know, he's got friends all over the squad. You know, he's always mixing with different players at different times. And I think it's important for a squad that you have you know, personalities like that around because they're, they're the gel in the team. I think he's probably changed, I'm sure. He has matured a lot as he's got older and um, taken on more of a sort of maybe slightly more experienced role. It certainly looks like that from outside with England team in, in the recent times, but um, he's always been a very uh, infectious sort of character around the place. Do you remember when you first, uh, before you met him, but when you first heard of him? As a player, sort of coming up. Yeah, I mean, probably the same as everybody when um, he announced himself with a goal uh, in the Everton first team. I think still 16 years of age was he um, uh, against David Seaman? Is that right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's that long ago now. It seems that you forget, but no, I think um, that was when. I mean, I, I kind of maybe had heard a few rumblings about him. You, t you, you do tend to hear slight things about the next Wonder Kid, but some of them go away and don't don't come through as you'd expect. But when Wayne announced himself in that way. Um, and uh, it looked like no bother to him, you know, to score a goal like that. Most uh, kids would probably get overexcited, maybe go out of the squad for a while. You wouldn't hear about them for a while and stuff like that. I think Wayne all of a sudden took to it, and um, within the next year or so, it was very, very evident the player was going to be. And was it, you know, evident when you first encountered him at the England camp? Did you think, yeah, yeah, this guy, he's got it? Yeah, yeah. I, I could go back to the ability of Wayne and his, the way he receives the ball. It's something that you sort of. You don't lose ever, I think, um, and even as a youngster, you, you know, it makes a difference instantly. You know, some uh, young players can go into a, 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 an experienced squad um, and look out of place. Wayne never looked out of place. He looked comfortable in his demeanour. He looked comfortable in the way he played and trained. Uh, and the minute he ran on the pitch, I played, and I remember playing his debut because I remember thinking what a baby face he had because he was so young, um, and he was quite quiet actually in his first couple of squads. And I think. Um, but you could see straight away that it was a boy that wasn't phased by it and he had the ability to, to carry on with it. Did he see, you know, for example, a Euro 2004 game in the same way that he'd see, see playing a game with his mates on the street? I think, I think so. I think so. I think to, for him to take to it so well at such a young age, um, you know, we would, 99 point whatever percent of other players would be overawed by that, that moment. You know, it might not have affected your career as a whole, but your first game thrown in the deep end against the likes of Zidane. Uh, in a tournament would be maybe a bit too much, you know. He actually took the game by the scruff of the neck, as you say, played without a care in the world if he's playing with his mates. I think it's quite a recurring theme with him as a player that he plays in that way, you know, there's not a fear, he'll receive the ball anyway, he'll keep trying to do his thing. Um, and he did it, we were all amazed. I think there was, um, I certainly was playing on the same pitch as him on, on the day against France in that first game. And I think we all were um, throughout that tournament, go, wow, what, what a, the talent we've got on our hands here is something that England was crying out for at the time as well when he came out and, uh, and showed that at 17, not phased, ability to affect games at that top level um, and from then on it was all at his feet really. Should England have won year in 2004? Of all the ones that I've been involved in and I think I've pretty much been involved in the tournaments Wayne's been involved in, I think it was the one where we had momentum, we had a good team. We had uh, players throughout the team you look at, it was very, very strong, very solid. Um, the fan base was incredible, we were getting support in every game we played. Um, and if we'd have gone through against Portugal, if we'd have you know, not got, got out on penalties, I believe we could have done. I really do, but you know, Greece ended up winning it. When you look at the players man for man we had at the time, um, we could have gone on and won that. And had Wayne stayed fit and not broken his metatarsal, um, would it have even got to penalties? I don't know. I mean, it's a hard one to call that. I mean, we, you obviously miss a player who's lighting up the tournament. So, I mean, you can say that, but at the same time, I don't know. I mean, games against Portugal in a quarter-final and that are always tough, no matter with what players you've got in the team, really. And it, it could have stayed tight and gone to 
I remember it being a very tough game anyway for all of us. But yeah, of course, you had a player who was, who was pivotal in, in um, getting the excitement of the team, you know, the nation behind the team, and uh, then he he gets injured. Of course, it's a huge impact, but it's hard to say that that was the the you know whole difference. But it certainly would have possibly made that change. Um, and just jumping forward to 2006, another injury that Wayne had. How mm. did that affect the build-up to the World Cup? Um, that it was kind of Rooney, the mania of is Wayne yeah. going to be fit or not? Well, it was unfortunate. And looking back, and it will happen again. It's the modern day, particularly with our press at home. It became such a talking point. I'm sure it was detrimental to the, the, the team, the squad, and Wayne himself. You know, that the pressure that would become him then by uh, everyone waiting for his moment to step on the pitch. The fact that the press made it out that we needed him, otherwise we had no chance. Um, all those things probably didn't help. Didn't have helped probably Wayne to have his best tournament. Didn't help us as a team to to, to get by as well. Because as I say, in football, however great a player Wayne is, and he's probably been the most important player for England for quite a while now. But um, if you try and rely on that in itself in the modern day, you've got no chance. Did you notice any any kind of effect on Wayne in his demeanour at all in the, the um, pre-tournament weeks? Not. It's hard to remember now, really. I, I can't imagine it not affecting him. You know, I mean, to go into a tournament when there's such uh, high expectations on yourself, which he would have had at the time, and and to be injured, you know that it's not easy to come straight off an injury straight into a World Cup anyway for for anybody. Um, I know he's a boy that's determined to try and do well for his country and play well every game he plays in. So I'm sure he was affected. I can't remember him being, you know, extra quiet or extra, you know, uh, a bit distant or anything like that. But um, he would have had his own issues, in, in it, without a doubt. I think that's human nature. Um, and just, do you think that all that all boiled up into the, the sending off? Do you think that, that all that that came sort of was in the back of his mind? Um, of frustration. You have to ask him that, but I think for for Wayne, uh, he plays on the edge and he has an instinct. Um, and sometimes that instinct has come out in him, you know, simple as that. Um, it's what brings, makes him brilliant to try an overhead kick, you know, to try the, the amazing bit of skill that, that comes off many a time. Um, but he's competitive, he wants to win. Um, maybe he was frustrated on that game alone and we, were, we weren't playing particularly well and we were struggling a bit. Um, I don't know, you'd have to ask him if there's any more backdrop to it than that. But I just think, not just Wayne, all of us as players can have a moment. Sometimes you can reflect on a moment five minutes later and realise you were wrong, or five years later. Um, but we're all human and that happens. To sum up the experience of 2010, was it, was it a, a happy camp, <laughs> England camp? Uh, no, I think it's been spoke about a lot. We were quite secluded. Um, it's easy to talk, you know, years after the event, but we were secluded um, and it seemed like a very, very long time. We'd been to Austria twice, I think, pre-tournament. Uh, and that's South Africa and was secluded for a while. There's no excuses and we didn't play as well as we could. Simple as that. The squad un underperformed and it was a frustrating uh, World Cup for everybody. Did you understand Wayne's frustrations after Algeria when he, he you know, spoke down yeah, the camera? Yeah, I did. Um, two things about that. I understood them completely. We all felt like that. I'm sure the fans were frustrated because we hadn't played them as well. Algeria was probably the, the lowest point of that. Um, I, you know, I quite... So I respect Wayne for saying it. I mean, he'd probably say now it was a mistake, and uh, I think probably any of us that did that. But there's something to be said for someone who's impulsive and says, I don't care, I'm, I'm frustrated at the minute, and I'm going to open my mouth. You know, I think he would, uh, England fans like to see England players that are passionate. You know, maybe the wrong thing came out. But for me, certainly, um, it wasn't, you know, a direct. Uh, I don't think there was any meaning to it. It was Wayne's own frustrations. And as I say, I don't mind seeing people do that. I think he probably would have apologise since then and probably say now I wish I'd never done that but at the same time if you're playing with players who are on the edge who want to win who are competitive as I said then they're going to maybe say things sometimes. I think Wayne's achievement is incredible I mean I think he's doing it and will do it Man United break records you know win so many uh, achieve, achievements medals personal achievements uh, but to do it for England I mean we all grew up and I'm, I'm older than Wayne, and so I'll remember more the, the Gary Lineker days and even hearing back to you know days previous to that. And these people are, um, are heroes and icons and will remain forever in, uh, on, you know, in people's memories of, of being the greatest England players. Um, and there's nothing harder than scoring goals. It's the hardest thing in football by, by a fair, fair way, really. Um, so maybe sometimes when you're in the era with somebody, you maybe don't always quite... Um, uh, 
you know, assess the achievement of what it is. You know, to play in the modern day, defences are tougher to play against. There aren't so many easy friendlies where goals are, you know, easy pickings. Um, I think Wayne has done an incredible achievement. Certainly it will be, I think, a record that will be looked back on um, and held with real, real high regard as opposed to maybe even what it's seen as now. And what would you say to people, and there are people out there who, despite everything, feel like he's actually underachieved, which is laughable to even say it, really? I would say that's a modern day. I think you probably name any of the top players in the modern day now. And uh, it's the way we're living, you know, there's uh, social media, radio, TV, everyone's got an opinion. Um, it's tribal, you know, if you're uh, you know, a certain fan of a certain team, those players you hold in really high regard, you might criticise other ones. I don't think that, you, you, as a player and as a top player, you have to take no notice of that. And that, that's why I think maybe sometimes time is a benefit there, because, you know, in the extra five or ten years, Wayne will probably be long retired. People go, wow, he did this, he did that, he did this. So I, there's, no, there's no element of underachievement. It's, um, it's something that will be thrown in, but I think if anyone with any real sense would sit back and go, Wow, look at this record, you know, and you can't do that unless you're a great player and Wayne is a great player. Where do you rate him amongst the England race? Well, he's up there. Uh, you know, the, the, the one thing we'll all have against us is that we never won a World Cup uh, or a major tournament. And uh, not many of us have uh, as an Englishman. You know, there's only one a select group that have. They deserve their title as a group there to be held in the highest of regards. But it doesn't mean you can write off every other team since then doesn't mean you can write off Gary Lineker, doesn't mean you can write off people like Brian Robson, you can go through them all, who are, who are England greats in their own eras, and Wayne is one of those. So I don't know where you put him in the list, it doesn't really matter, but you certainly have to speak about him in the same breath.